بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين My dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In continuation with our topic, prayers and supplications Tonight, we will be talking about the answer the prayers How God answers our prayers There is a fundamental question that goes in everyone's mind how do we elicit God's mercy? How does God bestow His mercy upon us? What conditions should be met that God will shower us with His mercy and a blessing? Or what action we do, what should we do in order to trigger the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of mercy, blessing, answering our needs and desires. You see, brothers and sisters, the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including answering the prayers, falls under the divine order, the norms and laws of a creation that He has created, just like any of His affairs. The Almighty Allah has many numerous affairs. All of those are subject to the divine laws, the law of a creation, where the God calls them tradition of God, Sunnatullah. Walan tajida sunnatillahi tabdila. You do not see differences, alteration in the norms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the laws of a creation. One of his affairs is answering the calls or bestowing his mercy to his creatures. Now, his response is totally different from our response as a human to certain needs. His response is not subject to temper or emotion or compulsive behavior. Sometimes we hastily respond to something due to our emotions because we get agitated, because we get elated and happy. Therefore, we do something quickly. Our reactions are considered to be quick due to our emotions. The answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different. It is not subject to a compulsive behavior. Rather, it is subject to the norms and the laws of a creation that God has called it Sunnatullah. Now the question is, what should we do in order to, tr to trigger the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of bestowing mercy, blessing, blessing us, answering our needs and our calls? The whole thing has to do with the action or the words that we say, and that is called dua. Dua means supplications and prayers. Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, has very eloquent, short statement where he says, dua miftah al-Rahma. Supplication is the keys to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should know that when you have the key of the dua, you will elicit the response of Allah. But unfortunately, not everyone knows how to use this key, how to utilize this key in order to elicit the mercy of Allah. It has to have a protocol. It has to have a condition, and you have to follow that. Just like a user manual, for any appliance that you use. The application, the dua, 
the supplication also has a user manual because the minute you get to that key the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pouring in they will come limitless as the Almighty Allah says in the Holy Quran مَا يَفْتَحِ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ رَحْمَةٍ فَلَا مُمْسِكَ لَهَا if the mercy of Allah is showered then upon people then it has no end the Prophet peace be upon him tells Ali ibn Abi Talib advises him tells him Ya Ali أُوصِيكَ بِالدُّعَاءِ فَإِنَّ مَعَهُ الْإِجَابَةِ I admonish you that you do supplication because it is coupled and conjugated with divine response Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, himself says مَنْ أُعْطِيَ الْدُعَاءِ لَمْ يُحْرَمِ الْإِجَابَةِ Someone who does a prayer and call upon his Lord then God would not deprive him from answering him always you will see the answer as the Almighty God has said وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ you pray on me you call upon me and then you will see the answer again the prevailing question is what is the relationship between God's mercy and the prayers and supplications that we do how the supplication and a prayer triggers and it prompts the God's mercy the scholars have a beautiful answer for that they say that there are two steps process step number one is even before you say your needs even even before you articulate your prayers and supplication the state that you are in will it triggers God response they say that the state of total neediness the state of total and abject poverty the insufficiency itself and our total dependency on the Almighty itself will trigger the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when God see us in desperate need when we are in total need to him then that itself compromise comprises an answer from God they give example they say in the same manner that a crying child toddler or infant when he is dismayed hungry thirsty and he cries for the assistant of mother and the same rate that he is begging and asking although unconsciously with a crying for the help of mother the same thing the passion of mother her love toward this children to this child also pushes her toward finding the child seeking the child and helping him in the same manner that the child needs the attention of his mother the passion of the mother her love and affection toward the child makes her in search of the child and the infant to help him this total abject poverty that we are in will elicit the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty Allah says Ya ayyuhan nas antum al-fuqara'u ila Allah wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hameen you are in abject poverty towards your Lord you don't have anything you are in total reliance and dependence on him this state of being dependent on Allah will elicit his response that he will shower us with his mercy the same way as the child that I have described in need of the assistant of his mother the mother's passion also is in need to help the child to assist the child an agonized patient with chronic illness in the same manner that he's impatiently waiting for the doctor to treat him the passion of the, the doctor 
the expertise of the doctor also is in, in search of that patient to help him in the same way when we commit sins when we make falsehood and wrongdoing the mercy of the Lord will become in search for us the, the mercy itself will search for our crimes for our sins to forgive us the passion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mercy of Allah is so vast that itself is in search of the wrongdoers to forgive them look at the beautiful verse in the holy Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Oh, those people who have, done, <coughs> who have been excessive on themselves, who have done extravagance, do not be hopeless from the mercy of Allah. God will forgive all mistakes all sins the verse does not mention repentance does not mention that you should ask for forgiveness just say the fact that you are in excessive amount of sins that will elicit the response of God after all how many who are in need of help pray to God to receive assistance not so many how many who are hungry and pray to God to feed their stomach? Not so many. But you see billions of people get fed every day. Millions of people get cured every day without asking. Just the fact that you are in need of God, that itself will elicit the response of mercy. As the narration, as the dua says, Ya man yu'ti man sa'ala. Ya man yu'ti مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلْهُ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرَفْهُ تَحَنُّنًا مِنْهُ وَرَحْمَةً Oh, you the Lord, who you answer the calls who do not answer you, do not beg you, do not ask for you, still you shower them with your mercy. So the first criteria is the neediness, total neediness toward Him. The second one, it is the neediness when it's coupled with comprehension when we understand, when we are aware of our need toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we are cognizant of our need, when I am in a state of knowing that He's the only one who will help me, He's the only one who's capable of assisting me. When those two things, my neediness with my awareness are coupled, that will elicit more of the blessings more of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that itself constitute the essence of dua that is considered to be the brain of worship as the prophet peace be upon him says a dua mukhul ibadah the prayers are the brain the mind of the prayers why because when i ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way, I am asking for his help. In another way, I am admitting my total reliance on him. And that's where he said, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Inna alladheena yastakbaroona an ibadati. They do not call upon me. They will enter the hellfire. Because they refuse to admit that they are in total obedience and total reliance the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the calls when we are in a desperate situation coupled with our understanding and awareness of the situation that will constitute constitute an answered call of a prayers we will come back after this. يا من هو رب كل شيء يا من هو إله كل شيء يا من هو خالق كل شيء 
يا من هو صانع كل شيء يا من هو قبل كل شيء يا من هو بعد كل شيء يا من هو فوق كل شيء يا من هو عالم بكل شيء يا من هو قادر على كل شيء يا من هو يبقى ويفنى كل شيء سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا مؤمن يا مهيمن يا مكون يا ملقن يا مبين يا مهون يا ممكن يا مزين يا معلن يا مقسم سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا من هو في ملكه مقيم يا من هو في سلطاني قديم يا من هو في جلالي عظيم يا من هو على عباده رحيم يا من هو بكل شيء عليم يا من هو بمن عصاه حليم يا من هو بمن رجاه كريم يا من هو في صنعه حكيم يا من هو في حكمته لطيف يا من هو في لطفه قديم سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back again with the beautiful and elegant Dua Joshan Al Kabir. We have reached segment number 16, where it says in number 16, and it is um, the theme of this segment is a troubleshooting or to solve the problems, where it says, Ya man huwa rabbu kullu shay, Ya man huwa ilahu kullu shay, Ya man huwa khaliqu kullu shay. يا من هو صانع كل شيء يا من هو قبل كل شيء يا من هو بعد كل شيء يا من هو فوق كل شيء يا من هو عالم بكل شيء يا من هو قادر على كل شيء يا من هو يبقى ويفنى كل شيء It says Oh who is the Lord over all things Who is the God of all times Who is the creator of all things who is the fashioner of all things, who is the oppressor of all things, who is the succeeder of everything, who is above all things, who knows all things, who is powerful, powerful over all things, who is the sustainer and extinguisher of everything. Troubleshooting. When you buy an appliance, when you buy an, an, an instrument, when the instrument goes wrong or the appliance is not working, you try to go to the same shop that has made it, to the manufacturer or to the agent of that appliance. Why? Because he's the one who has put all of those together. He's the one who has assembled that appliance. Therefore, he knows everything in it. 
He knows the ins and outs of all of all parts of that appliance. Therefore, it would be very incumbent upon us to take it to the creator of that appliance, the manufacturer of that appliance, because they know everything about it and they can fix it right away. The same thing, when we want something to be fixed, especially our soul, our spirit, to whom should we go? We go to the original manufacturer, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who has created us. He's the one who have installed the soul in the body. Therefore, if I, pay, if I feel pain, if I feel that there is something wrong, I always go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says that, Ya man huwa rabbu kulli shay, Ya man huwa ilahu kulli shay, Ya man huwa khaliqu kulli shay, Ya man huwa sani'u kulli shay. He's the one who creates things because to him wouldn't take much time. The instant that he decides upon something, that will happen right away. As the ayah says, وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ وَإِذَا أَرَادْ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ وَمَا أَمْرُنَا إِلَّا وَاحِدَةٌ كَلَمْحٍ كَلَمْحِ الْبَصَرِ It's an instantaneous thing. The minute that God wants, He can make that thing. He can create that thing. He can manufacture that thing. Therefore, if something goes wrong in those objects, we send it back to its original manufacturer. The 17th segment, again, the theme is to succeed in all tasks, where it says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bismik, ya mu'minu, ya muhaymin, ya mukawwinu, ya mulaqin, ya mubayyinu, ya muhawwin, ya mumakkinu, ya muzayyinu, ya mu'alinu, ya muqsim. When sometimes you plan for yourself ahead of time, the night before you sit down and make a big laundry list of things that you want to do the, pre the, the succeeding day, on the next day. Maybe there are six, seven items that you want to tackle and solve. But sometimes you see that although you have a plan for them, you have written them, at the end of the day, you didn't accomplish anything, not even one or two. And sometimes with the blessing of God, you see that the environment was conducive, that you were, the situation was conducive, that you ended up fixing all those issues. The six or seven items that you have listed them, all you were able and managed to accomplish them. What is the difference? The difference is that God, on the previous day, He didn't smooth out the road to us. But on the second day, He smoothened out all the situation. We didn't have, for example, to stop in the traffic. Or we went in the time that the shopkeeper was opening his shop. It was not closed. Or it was not on a rainy day. Or it was not on a hot day. Or you didn't have electricity outage. The same situation that people in Iraq experience every day. These are things that God will smoothen the way for us. Therefore, it is incumbent that at the beginning of each day, we go back to Him and ask Him for making our life easy that day and give us a blessing, give the time a blessing so we manage to deal with our affairs and to complete our task. It is only with God's bless blessings we can do that. Then, segment number 18, it says, which is the theme of that, is to increase and maintain livelihood and permanent position. Where it says, Ya man huwa fi mulkihi qadim, Ya man huwa fi sultanihi qadim, يا من هو في جلاله عظيم يا من هو على عباده رحيم يا من هو بكل شيء عليم يا من هو بمن عصاه حليم يا من هو بمن رجاه كريم يا من هو في صنعه حكيم 
يا من هو في حكمته لطيف يا من هو في لطفه قديم where it says that everything every everlasting every lasting in his kingdom eternal in his sovereignty greatest in his grandeur most merciful to his servants knower of everything forbearing to he who disobeys him magnanimous to he places to he places his hope in him he who is wise over what he has fashioned he who is subtle in his wisdom he who is eternal in his kindness these are the words that only applies attributes that only applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permanence the only entity that remains permanent is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are all transient we change through time we never stay put however it would be nice to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep the blessings and the mercies that he has bestowed upon us permanent that we keep them forever if you are in a good shell shape and you have health then ask the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala with these beautiful words that we have said ya man huwa fi mulkihi qadeem ya man huwa fi sultanihi qadeem you tell him that since you are a primordial you can keep the ni'mah the blessing on me then continue it on me this is a way of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we pray to him that he will continue his blessings and these are the words of a praise that we place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he can continue his blessings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The best means by which seekers of nearness to Allah to glorify the exalted seek nearness is the belief in him and his prophet fighting in his cause for it is the high pinnacle of Islam to believe in the kalamatul ikhlas for it is the just nature the establishment of prayer for it is the basis of humanity and community payment of zakat for it is a compulsory obligation fasting for the month of ramazan for it is a shield against chastisement the performance of hajj of the house of allah and its umrah for these two acts banish poverty and wash away sins regard for kinship for it increases wealth and length of life to give alms secretly for it covers shortcomings giving alms openly for it protects against a bad debt extending benefits to the people for it saves from positions of disgrace